guys, happy Sunday! This is Cece. Let's study California Driver's Handbook 2021. Newsom, Governor, State of California. David Askim, Secretary, California State Transportation Agency. Steve Gordon, Director, California Department of Motor Vehicles. Dear fellow Californian, every year, the Secretary of the California State Transportation Agency pens an introduction to the latest edition of the California Driver's Handbook. While the words change, the primary message stays the same. This handbook can help you and everyone you share the road with reach their destination safely. The message rings as true today as ever. But it's about the only thing that hasn't changed since I wrote the introduction to last year's edition. In 2020, we began to grapple with unprecedented disruption to our lives caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Among the countless impacts were changes to where and how we work, receive medical care, or attend school. Our dependence on driving has shifted. Additionally, how we interact with the California Department of Motor Vehicles has also changed. DMV vastly expanded its online services to include many transactions that previously required an office visit. From transferring a vehicle title to renewing a commercial driver's license or requesting a duplicate driver's license, you can now take care of nearly all DMV tasks on your laptop or smartphone. I encourage you to visit dmv.ca.gov slash online to learn more. Another notable change is that this handbook has been refreshed to eliminate technical jargon and make it easier to read and understand. I hope you find this updated version informative, helpful, and practical. Please stay safe while you're behind the wheel and remember to share the road and keep a close eye on pedestrians, bicyclists, and scooter riders. Wishing you safety and good health. David S. Kim, Secretary, California State Transportation Agency. Copyright Department of Motor Vehicles 2021. Section 1. Introduction to the California Driver's Handbook. Section 2. About California DMV. Section 3. The California Driver's License. Section 4. Getting an instruction permit and driver's license when you are under 18 years old. Section 5. Getting a driver's license. Section 6. The testing process. Section 7. Changing, replacing, and renewing your driver's license. Section 8. An introduction to driving. Section 9. Navigating the roads. Section 10. Laws and rules of the road. Section 11. Safe driving. Section 12. Alcohol and drugs. Section 13. Vehicle registration requirements. Section 14. Financial responsibility insurance requirements and collisions. Section 15. Seniors and driving. Section 16, Glossary. Section 1, Introduction to the California Driver's Handbook. Before you can get a driver's license in California, you need to pass a knowledge test. This test shows that you understand driving laws and feel comfortable behind the wheel. It covers everything from driving basics to the rules of the road and safe driving habits. We created this driver's handbook to help you prepare for your test. The test questions are all taken from this handbook. 
The handbook also has resources like details about California DMV, making changes to your driver's license, and more. New law, effective July 1, 2021, AB 47. This law requires DMV to assess a negligent operator point on driver's record for a second conviction within 36 months of talking, texting, or using a handheld wireless communications device while driving. Disclaimer. This handbook is a summary of the laws and regulations in the vehicle code. DMV law enforcement and the courts follow the full, exact language of the v VC. You can read the VC at leginfo.legislature.ca.gov. This handbook contains information about a basic Class C driver's license. If you want to learn about other driver's license classes, read the California Commercial Driver Handbook, California Motorcycle Handbook, Recreational Vehicles and Trailers Handbook, Ambulance Driver's Handbook, California Parent Teen Training Guide. Save a trip to DMV and try one of these options. Online services, vehicle registration renewal, driver's license renewal, duplicate driver's license, replacement sticker or registration card, title transfers, duplicate title, report of traffic accident, commercial driver's license renewal. DMV Now, Kiosk, Vehicle Re Registration Renewal, Driver's Vehicle History Records, Replacement Sticker or Registration Card, Duplicate Driver's License. Section 2 About California DMV DMV's mission is to proudly serve the public by licensing drivers registering vehicles, securing identities, and regulating the motor vehicle industry in pursuit of public safety. DMV Services Online services. Visit dmv.ca.gov slash online to find our online services. Phone services. Call 1-800-777-777. 01334 The following services During normal business hours, get driver's license and then vehicle registration information, forums, and publications. Make a driving test appointment. Talk to a DMV representative or request a call back. For automated 24 7 service, renew your vehicle registration. Use the renewal identification number on your billing notice if you have one. Pay with the credit card or e-check. Make a field office appointment. Have your driver's license or identification card number, vehicle license plate number, vehicle identification number available. Cryostic services. Visit dmv.ca.go and search Kiosks, K -I -O -S -K -S, to find Kiosk locations. Office hours. To find the office hours and service options of your nearest DMV, visit dmv.ca.go or call 1-800-777. 0133. Some field offices may have extended hours or limited services. Individuals who are deaf, hard of hearing, or have speech impairments may call 1 800 368 4327 for assistance. Contact us. 
send comments or suggestions for this driver handbook to Department of Motor Vehicles Customer Communication Sections, MSH 165, P.O. Box 932345, Sacramento, California 94232. Section 3. The California Driver's License. A California driver's license gives you permission to drive on public roads. You must have your driver's license with you when you drive. Show your driver's license to any law enforcement officer who asks to see it. Show your driver's license to the other driver if you are in a collision. Have a valid driver's license. It's a misdemeanor to drive with an expired driver's license. You may get a ticket, have your vehicle impounded, and be required to appear in court. Who must have a driver's license? California residents. California residents who drive on public roads or use public parking facilities must have a driver's license. Military personnel. Visit dmv.ca.gov slash veterans for active duty military personnel licenses. New California residents. When you become a California resident and wish to drive in the state, you must apply for a California driver's license within 10 days. There are a variety of ways to establish California residency, including registering to vote in California elections, getting a job, paying resident tuition at a California college or university, filing for a homeowner's property tax exemption, receiving any other privilege or benefit not given to non-residents. Adults visiting California. Visitors over 18 years old may drive in California with valid driver's license from their home, state, or country. Penalties for unlicensed drivers. Driving without a license could result in a fine and jail sentence. It is illegal for anyone with a suspended or revoked driving privilege to drive your car. If an unlicensed person is caught driving your vehicle, it may be impounded for 30 days. Anyone hired to drive interstate commercial vehicles must be at least 21 years old. You also must be at least 21 years old to transport hazardous materials or waste. Types of driver's licenses. Anyone operating a vehicle must have a license to drive that vehicle type. Most people need a Class C driver's license. To operate commercial vehicles, motorcycles, in other types of vehicles, you must have a different class of a license. Class C driver's licenses. With a Class C driver's license, you may drive a 2X vehicle with gross vehicle weight rating of 26,000 lbs or less. 3X vehicle weighing 6,000 lbs or less. House car. Three-wheel motorcycle with two wheels located in the front or back. Van pull vehicle designed to carry between 10 and no more than 15 people. With the Class C driver's license, you may tow a single vehicle with a GVWR of 10,000 LBs or less. With a vehicle weighing 4,000 LBs or more unladen. Trailer coach or fifth wheel traveler trailer under 10,000 LBs. 
fifth wheel travel trailer exceeding 10,000 lbs but under 15,000 lbs. GVWR when towing is not for compensation and with endorsement. A farmer or employee of a farmer may drive any combination of vehicles weighing 26,000 lbs. GVWR or less if used only in agricultural operations and not for hire or compensation. Notes about Class C driver's licenses. Drivers with the Class C license may not tow more than one a vehicle. A passenger vehicle, regardless of weight, may not tow more than one vehicle. A motor vehicle weighing under 4,000 lbs may not tow any vehicle weighing 6,000 lbs or more gross. Other driver's license classes endorsements visit dmv.ca.gov slash certificates and endorsements to learn about other driver's license classes and endorsements. Real ID Drivers Licenses The federal government passed the Real ID Act of 2005 in response to the events of 9-11. Beginning May 2023, your driver's license or identification card must be Real ID compliant if you use it to board an airplane for domestic flights enter military bases, enter most of federal facilities. Visit dmv.ca.gov slash real ID to learn more about applying for a real ID. Driver's license designations, organ and tissue donation. When you apply for or renew your driver license or ID, you may sign up to donate your organs and tissue after your death. Your driver's license or ID will display a pink donor dot showing your participation in the donor program. If you are at least 18 years old, your authorization does not require the consent of your legal guardian. Visit DonateLifeCalifornia.org for more information. Veteran When renewing or applying for a driver's license or ID card, veterans may request to have the word veteran added to their card for an extra $5 fee. Visit dmv.ca.org Go slash veterans to learn more about the requirements and benefits of veteran designation. ID cards. ID cards are only used for identification purposes. They don't permit you to drive in California. ID cards are issued to eligible persons of any age. To get an ID card, you must provide your identity document, resident documents, social security number. Visit dmv.ca.gov slash ID cards to apply for an ID card and learn about reduced fee, no fee, or senior ID cards. Section 4. Getting an instruction permit and driver's license when you are under 18 years old. If you are under 18 years old, you are a minor. You can apply for a minor's provisional instruction permit and provisional driver's license with the approval of your parents or legal guardians. Minor's instruction permits. Here is an overview of what you need to get your instruction permit be at least 15 and a half years old, complete a driver education program, complete the driver's license and ID card application, 
dl44, edl44 at dmv.ca.go. Have your parents or legal guardians signed the application? If both parents' guardians have joined custody, both must sign, pass a knowledge test. See the instruction permits page at dmv.ca.go slash instruction permits for a complete list of application steps and requirements. Restrictions. Your instruction permit is not valid until you start behind the wheel driver training with an instructor who signs the permit. Your instruction permit does not allow you to drive alone at any time, not even to a DMV office to take in driving test. You must practice driving with a California licensed driver, such as your parent or guardian. A driving instructor, your suppose, an adult who is at least 25 years old. This person must sit close enough to take control of the vehicle if needed. R- read the California Parenting Training Guide, DL603, for more driving practice imp- information. Note minors cannot drive for pay or operate commercial vehicles. Minor's driver's licenses. After you have your minor's instruction permit for at least six months, you can apply for a minor's driver's license. Here is an overview of what you need to get your driver's license. Be at least 16 years old, Prove that you completed both driver education and driver training. Practice driving for at least 50 hours. 10 hours must be at night. Pass your knowledge test. Pass a behind the wheel driving test. See the driver licenses page at dmv.ca.go slash DL services for the complete list of application steps and requirements. Minors restrictions and exceptions. When you have a minor's driver's license, there are restrictions. You cannot drive between 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. During the first 12 months, you have your license. You cannot drive with passengers under 20 years old unless a parent, guardian, or other California licensed driver 25 years old or older rides with you. There are exceptions to these restrictions if you have a medical need and cannot reasonably find another way to travel. You must carry a note signed by your physician. The note must have your diagnosis and the date when you are expected to recover. You are driving for schooling or school activity. You must carry a note signed by your school principal, dean, or designee. You must drive for work reasons. You must carry a note signed by your employer, The note must confirm your employment. You must drive an immediate family member. You must carry a note signed by your parent, parents, or legal guardian, guardians. The note must state the reason you need to drive the family member and a date when they need will end. Emancipated Minors Minors restrictions and exceptions may not apply to emancipated minors. An emancipated minor is no longer under the care and control of parents or guardians. They must provide court documents proving their emancipation in a California insurance proof certificate. CR 22 
slash CR1P. Instead of parent or guardian signatures, emancipated minors must still complete driver education and driver training programs. Keeping your driver's license. DMV monitors your driving record. If you get into collisions or commit traffic violations within the first 12 months, DMV may restrict or suspend your driving privilege. You cannot drive if your driving privilege is suspended or revoked. DMV may take action against your license if you get a traffic ticket and fail to appear in court. DMV may suspend your driving privilege until you appear in court. Have one at fault collision or traffic violation conviction. And at fault collision means you were found responsible. Have second at fault collision two traffic violation convictions or one of each. You cannot drive for 30 days unless a licensed Adult at least 25 years old rides with you. Have three. At fault, collision. Three traffic violation convictions or a combination. Your driving privilege will be suspended for six months. You will be on a probation for one year. If you have more at fault collisions or traffic violation convictions while on probation, your license will be suspended again. Traffic violations resolved in juvenile court are reported to DMV are between 13 to 21 years old and are convicted of using alcohol and or a controlled substance. The court will order DMV to suspend your driving privilege for a year or delay your eligibility to apply for a driver's license. When you turn 18 years old, you can get a, a regular driver's license. Note, turning 18 years old does not erase or end existing restrictions, suspensions, or probation sentences. Minors and cell phones. It is against the law for a minor to use a cell phone or electronic wireless communication device while driving. Do not answer calls or send or respond to text messages while driving. Exception. In an emergency, you may use a cell phone to contact law enforcement a health care provider, fire department, or other emergency service. Instruction permits for minors from out of state. Minors from out of state must meet the requirements listed under minors instruction permits. See the California Parent Teen Training Guide DL603 at dmv.ca.gov. For more information about minors instruction permits and driver's licenses. Driving schools. Driver education and driver training is offered at state licensed driving schools and some high schools. DMV standards for driving schools and instructors. They must be licensed by DMV as well as insured and bonded. They must maintain complete records for DMV inspection. Driving school vehicles must be inspected every year. Instructors must pass a written exam every three years or show proof of keeping their education up to date. Instructors must carry an instructor's ID card asked to see it. See the driver training schools page at dmv.ca.gov slash driver training schools for more information about the selecting a driving school. Section 5. Getting a driver's license. 
A California driver's license gives you legal permission to drive a motor vehicle. What you need to apply for a driver's license, you must provide proof of identity, proving who you are, two proofs of residency, proving you live in California, one proof for a federal non-compliant driver's license. Through full name document, proving your current name, if the name on your identity document, and application do not match. Social security number exceptions may apply. The U.S. government sets driver licenses and ID cards as valid proof of identity. Real ID requirements may be changing. Visit dmv.ca.gov slash dlservices to learn more about current acceptable documents and eligibility. Applying for a driver's license. You can apply for a basic Class C driver's license at most DMV fields offices. Here is an overview of what you need to do to get your driver's license. Complete and sign a driver's license and ID card. Application DL44-EDL44 at dmv.ca.go. Provide your documents. Pay a non-refundable application fee. Pass your knowledge test. Pass a vision test. Pass a behind-the-wheel driving test. See the driver's license section at dmv.ca.gov slash DL services for the complete list of application steps and requirements. Section 6. The testing process. Before you can get your driver's license, you must pass three tests, vision, knowledge, and behind the wheel. You may also need to pass more than one test to renew your license or upgrade to a different driver's license class. We use these tests to help make sure that all California drivers are safe on the roads. Visit dmv.ca.go slash knowledge and drive test preparation to get more help preparing for your tests. DMV Driver's License Tests Here is an overview of the driver license tests. First, Vision Test DMV tests all applicants to make sure they can see well enough to drive. You will need to demonstrate that your vision meets the requirements to drive by reading an eye chart during your office visit. For more information, visit dmv.ca.gov slash vision standards. Second, knowledge test. You need to understand traffic laws and safety to get your driver's license. When you apply for an original driver's license, you must pass a knowledge test. Third, behind the wheel driving test. You will be tested on your driving ability to show that you can safely handle a vehicle. Make an appointment online at dmv.ca.gov slash make an appointment or call 1-800-777-0133 to take your driving test. On the day of your test, bring your instruction permit or driver's license if you have one. You may need to take a behind-the-wheel test even if you have a driver's license, if you have a vision or a medical condition that requires further evaluation. Another California licensed driver who is at least 18 years old, 25 years old for minors, unless you are already licensed to drive. A vehicle to use for your behind-the-wheel driving test. Behind-the-wheel test of vehicle. The vehicle you use for your behind-the-wheel test needs to be safe to drive, have valid registration, and be properly insured. You must bring proof of insurance. 
The vehicle must have working driver's side window, brake lights, horn, parking brake, and turn signals. Safe tires. The tires must have at least 32 out of 1 inch of uniform thread depth. Windshield that allows a full, clear, and blocked view for you and the person giving the test. At least two rear view mirrors. One of them must be on the left side of your vehicle. Working driver's side and front passenger seat belts. You need to show that you know how to work the vehicle headlights, windshield wipers, the froster, emergency flashers, and the parking brake. Reschedule your test if your vehicle does not meet these requirements. If you use a rental vehicle, your name must be listed on the rental contract. The contract must not exclude behind the wheel. Tests. Other things to know for your behind the wheel test. For your safety, no pets or passengers other than authorized DMV employees can be in the vehicle during your test. The purpose of the driving test is to determine your skill in operating a motor vehicle in most road situations and evaluate your abilities, not the vehicle's technology. Therefore, advanced driver assistance systems, technologies, such as automated parallel parking and adaptive cruise control are not permitted during the driving test. Vehicle safety technology, such as backup cameras, blind spot monitors, may be used on driving tests, but they're not a replacement for an actual visual check of your mirrors and blind spots and cannot solely be used on a driving test. Where to take the tests? You can take your tests at most DMV offices that provide driver's license services. To save time, make an appointment online at dmv.ca.gov slash make an appointment or call 1-800-777-0133 during normal business hours. Cheating. You are not allowed to use any testing aids during knowledge tests, such as California Driver's Handbook, cheat sheets, electronic communication devices such as cell phones at DMV will fail you if you use any aid during the knowledge test. An action may be taken against your driving privilege and or the driving privilege of anyone who helps you. Register to vote. For information on registering to vote, visit dmv.ca.gov. Use DMV Now, Kiosk for registration, renewal, and more. Vehicle registration, renewal, driver's vehicle history records, replacement, replacement sticker or registration card, duplicate driver's license, Vehicle registration suspensions, raised in statement fee payment. Visit dmv.ca.gov for more information. Section 7 Changing, Replacing, and Renewing Your Driver's License. Changing your information, change your name. If you legally change your name, update your driver's license, here is an overview of the steps. First, change your name with the Social Security Administration. Second, complete a new driver's license and ID card application DL44-EDL44 at dmv.ca.go. Third, bring your name change documents to a DMV office. See driver's license or ID card updates at dmv.ca.go ca.gov slash DL services for more information and list of documents you will need. Change your gender identity. See driver's license or ID card updates at dmv.ca.gov 
slash DL services for more information about changing your gender identity. Change your address. If you move, you must notify DMV of your new address within 10 days. Submit a change of address online at dmv.ca.go by mail or at DMV office. It is your responsibility to ensure DMV has your correct mailing address on record. Change your address with the U.S. Postal Service to ensure DMV correspondence is forwarded to your current mailing address. You don't automatically get a new driver's license when you change your address. You may request a replacement driver's license for a fee. See driver's license or ID card updates at dmv.ca.go slash DL services for more information. Replace a lost, stolen, or a damaged driver's license. If you need to replace a lost, stolen, or damaged driver's license, you must Fill out the driver's license and ID card application DL44 slash EDL44 at dmv.ca.go. You can fill out the form online before coming into a DMV office. Visit dmv.ca.go slash DL services or at DMV office. Pay a non-refundable replacement fee. Before DMV can give you a temporary driver's license, you may need to provide additional proof of your identity. If you are a minor, your parent, parents, or garden gardens must sign the DL44 EDL44. Once you receive your replacement card, your old card is no longer valid. If you find the old card, make sure to destroy it. Renew your driver's license. It's against the law to drive with an expired driver's license. Visit the driver's license or ID card renewal page at dmv.ca.go slash DL services for renewal options and instructions. Extend your driver's license. If you're away from California for a long period of time and cannot renew online, you may request a free one-year extension of your driver's license. You must do this before your driver's license expires. The request should include your name, driver's license number, birth date, California residence address, and auto state address. Mail your request to JMV PO Box 942890, Sacramento, California 94290. Note. Limited term drivers are not eligible for the extension. Section 8. An introduction to driving. Are you ready to drive? Vision. Make sure your vision is good enough for you to drive. Hearing. It is against the law to wear a headset or earplugs in both ears while driving. Drivers who are deaf or hard of hearing can adjust their driving habits. Fatigue and drivesness. Fatigue and drivesness can affect your vision and increase reaction time to hazards. Avoid driving if you are fatigued or drowsy. Medications. Prescription and over-the-counter medications can make you an unsafe driver. Some medicines can make you sleepy. Health. Doctors are required to report patients who are at least 14 years old to DMV if they are diagnosed as having lapses of consciousness, Alzheimer's disease, related disorders. Your doctor may also report other medical conditions if they believe they may affect your ability to drive safely. Maintaining your vehicle. Clean your windows and mirrors. Adjust your seat and mirrors. Check your tires that refer to your vehicle owner's manual. Controlling the vehicle. Hand-to-hand steering. This is also known as a push-slash-pull steering, 
When you use this method, your hands do not cross over the face of the steering wheel. As a result, there is less chance of injury to your face, arms, or hands if your airbag deploys. To use this method, start with your hands at nine and three o'clock, or lower at eight and four. Keep your hands in these positions while driving, even when making turns. Hand over hand steering. Use this steering method when you turn at low speeds, park, or need to recover from a skid. To use this method, start with your hands at nine and three o'clock, or lower at eight and four o'clock. Push the steering wheel up with one hand. Let go of the steering wheel with your other hand. Reach across the arms, still holding the wheel. Grip the wheel and pull up. One hand steering. There are only two situations that may require steering with one hand. When you are turning while backing out, place your hand at the twelve o'clock position on the steering wheel. This is necessary because you may need to turn. In your seat to see where you are going behind you. When you are operating vehicle controls that require you to remove a hand from the steering wheel, one-handed steering is only recommended in limited situation to control your vehicle. It's critical to keep both hands on the wheel whenever possible. Signals, horns, and headlights. Your signals, horn, and headlights are important for communicating with other drivers and seeing the road. Signaling, always signal when you turn, change lanes, slow down, or stop. Signaling lets other drivers, motorcyclists, bicyclists, and pedestrians know what your plans are. You can signal using hand and arm positions or your vehicle's signal lights. If bright sunlight makes your signal lights hard to see, also use the hand and arm signal shown in the image. Left turn, right turn, slower stop. Motorcyclists often use hand signals to make themselves more visible. Bicyclists may signal and turn with their arm held straight out, pointing in the direction they plan to turn. You should signal at least hundred feet before you turn. Before every lane change, also check your mirrors, look over your shoulder, and check your blind spot. At least five seconds before you change lanes on a freeway, before pulling next to the curb or away from the curb, even when you don't see other vehicles around you, make using your turn signal a habit. It can help to avoid collisions, even situations when you think you are safe. If you plan to turn after crossing an intersection, if you signal too early, other drivers might think you plan to turn at the intersection. As a result, they might pull out in front of you, start signaling when you are almost through the intersection. Remember to turn off your signal when you no longer need it. Using your horn, You can use your vehicle's horn to let other drivers know you are there, or to warn others of hazard. It is important to know when to use your horn and when not to. It's safer to slow down or stop instead of honking your horn. Use your horn to avoid collisions when necessary. Alert another driver of a hazard. Alert oncoming traffic on the narrow mountain roads where you cannot see at least two hundred feet ahead of your vehicle. Don't use your horn to urge a slow-moving driver or bicyclist to get faster, get out of your way. The driver or bicyclist may not be able to safely go faster. Alert other drivers that they made a mistake. Your honking. 
may cause them to make more mistakes and re re retaliate. Express anger. Honk at pedestrians, bicyclists, or motorcyclists unless necessary to avoid a collision. Remember that your horn sounds much louder outside the vehicle. Using your headlights. Your vehicle's headlights help you see what's in front of you. They also make it easier for other drivers to see your vehicle. Use your headlights when it's too dark to see. Use your headlights if you cannot clearly recognize a person or vehicle from thousand feet away. Being 30 minutes after sunset until 30 minutes before sunrise. In adverse weather, if you need to use your windshield wipers due to rain or snow, you must turn on your low beam headlights. When conditions such as the clouds, dust, smoke, or fog prevent you from seeing other vehicles. On small country or mountain roads and tunnels, even on sunny days, when a regulatory road sign states that headlights must be on to help other drivers see your vehicle, especially when the sun is low on the horizon. Using your emergency flashers. If you can see a collision or a hazard ahead, warn drivers behind using one or all of these methods. Turn on your emergency flashers. Lightly tap your brake pedal three or four times. Use the hand signal when slowing and stopping. Never stop on the road unless it's necessary to stay safe or obey law. If you need to stop, Start braking early as a signal to the vehicles behind you. If you need to stop because of a vehicle trouble, give other drivers plenty of warning that you are pulling over. Turn on your emergency flashers if you are not moving. If your vehicle does not have emergency flashers, use your turn signals. If possible, pull off the road away from all traffic. If you cannot get completely off the road, start where people can see you and your vehicle from behind. Don't stop just over a hill or just around a curve. Other drivers may not see your vehicle in time to avoid a collision. If it's safe to do so, lift the hood to signal an emergency, place emergency flares or triangles 200 to 300 feet behind your vehicle. These gives drivers time to change lanes if they need to be. Be careful. Be very careful when using flares. They may cause fires, especially when used near flammable liquids. Call for emergency roadside assistance. Follow the above guidelines and stay in your vehicle until help arrives. Section 9. Navigating the roads. Okay, guys, let's finish section nine and uh, let's take two, um, two tests from the uh, actual DMV California website. Okay, how exciting. All right, traffic lanes. A traffic lane is a section of road for a single line of traffic. There are several different types of lanes. Lane markings. Lane markings on road surfaces help drivers know which part of the road to use and understand traffic rules. Line colors and patterns mean different things. Single solid yellow line. A single solid yellow line marks the center of a road with two-way traffic. Do not cross over this line into oncoming traffic. Do not pass a vehicle in front of you if there is only one lane of traffic going your direction and a solid yellow line on your side of the road. Double solid yellow lines. Do not pass over double solid yellow lines. Never drive to the left of these lines unless you are in a high occupancy vehicle 
lane that has a designed entrance on the left. Instructed by construction or other signs to drive on the other side of the road because your side of the road is closed or blocked. Turning left across a single set of double yellow lines to enter or exit a driveway or private road or make a U turn. Two sets of solid double yellow lines spaced two or more feet apart are considered a barrier. Do not drive on. Or over this barrier, make a left turn or make a U turn across it, except at designated openings. Broken yellow line. A broken yellow line indicates you may pass if the broken line is next to your driving lane. Only pass when it's safe. Single solid white line. A single solid white line marks traffic lanes going into same direction. This includes one-way streets. Double solid white lines. Double solid white lines indicate a lane barrier between a regular use and a preferential use lane, such as the carpool lane. You may also see double solid white lines in or near freeway on and off ramps. Never change lanes over double solid white lines. Wait until you see a single broken white line. Broken white line. Broken white lines separate traffic lanes on roads with two or more lanes in the same direction. End of lane markings. Ending freeway and street lanes are usually marked with large broken lines. If you're driving in a lane marked with broken lines, be prepared to exit the freeway or for the lane to end. Look for a sign that tells you to exit or merge. Yield lines. A yield line is a solid white line of triangles that shows approaching vehicles where to yield or stop. The triangle point towards approaching vehicles. A yield line is also known as a shark's teeth. Choosing a lane. Traffic lanes are often referred to by number. The left or fast lane is called the number one lane. The lane to the right of the number one lane is called the number two lane. Then the number three lane ad. Here are some tips for choosing a lane. Use the left lane to pass or turn left. Use the right lane to enter or exit traffic. Changing lanes. You might change lanes when moving from one lane to another, entering the freeway from an on ramp, exiting the freeway, entering the road from curb or shoulder. Before you change lanes, signal. Look in all your mirrors. Check traffic behind and beside you. Look over your shoulder and the direction you plan to move to make sure the lane is clear. Check your blind spot for other vehicles, motorcyclists, and bicyclists. Be sure there is enough room or space for your vehicle in the next lane. Stay in one lane as much possible. Do not weave in and out of traffic. Last-minute lane or direction change may cause collisions. Once you start moving through an intersection, keep going. If you start to make a turn, follow through. If you miss a turn, keep driving until you can safely and legally turn around. Types of lanes, passing lanes, on a multi-line road. The passing lane is the lane closest to the center divider and is used to pass other vehicles. It's also known as the fast lane because it's used by faster moving traffic. You will learn more about passing later in this section. Carpool high occupancy vehicle. An HOV lane is a special lane reserved for carpools. Buses, motorcycles, or low-emission vehicles with decals. To use an HOV lane, one of these things must apply. 
You have a certain number of people in your vehicle. There will be signs that the on ramp or along the road tell you the minimum number of people. The signs also list the days and hours when the carpool HOV rules apply. You are driving a low emission or zero emission vehicle. You must display a special DMV issued decal. You are riding a motorcycle unless otherwise posted. The road surface in HOV lanes is marked with a diamond symbol and the words carpool lane don't cross over double solid lines to enter or exit an HOV lane except at designated entry or exit places. Center left turn lines. A center left turn lane is located in the middle of a two-way street. It is marked on both sides by two painted lines. The inner line is broken and the outer line is solid. Use the center left turn lane to prepare for and make a left turn or U-turn. It's not regular traffic lane or a passing lane. You may only drive for 200 feet in the center left turn lane. To turn left from this lane, look for other vehicles coming toward you in the center left turn lane. Signal, look over your shoulder to check your blind spot. Merge completely into the center left turn lane so you don't block traffic. Turn when it's safe. When turning left from a side street or driveway, signal and wait until it's safe. Then drive into the center left turn lane. Enter traffic only when it's safe. Turn out areas or lanes. Some two-lane roads have special turnout areas or lanes. They are usually marked. Merge into these areas or lanes to allow cars behind you to pass. You must use a turnout area or lane to let other vehicles pass when you are driving slowly on a two-lane road where passing is unsafe and there are five or more vehicles following you. Bicycle lanes. Bicycle lanes are for bicyclists only and run alongside vehicle traffic. They are typically marked by a single solid white line and signs. They are sometimes painted bright green to make them easier to see. The solid line will change to dash it near an intersection. There are multiple types of bike lanes and markings. Bike lane. Established along streets adjacent to vehicle traffic, typically defined by a single solid white line that turns into dashed line near an intersection. Buffered bike lane uses chevrons or diagonal markings to provide greater separation from traffic and on street parking. Bike roads uses bike road signs and or shared road markings to design a preferred road for bicyclists and on streets shared with vehicle traffic. Bicycle Boulevard prioritizes bicycle travel on streets shared with vehicle traffic. Separated bikeway. For the exclusive use of bicyclists physically separated from vehicle traffic, also known as the cycle track or protected bike lane. The separation may include flexible posts, grade separation, and flexible barriers or street parking. Shared roadway bicycle markings. Sheriffs. Alert traffic that bicyclists can occupy the lane. When used appropriately, sheriffs help bicyclists maintain a safe lane position. It is illegal to drive in a bicycle lane unless you are parking where permitted, entering or leaving the road, turning within 200 feet of the intersection. Note, check your blind spots before entering a bike lane. If you drive a motorized bicycle, use caution to avoid other bicyclists. Travel at a reasonable speed and do not endanger the safety of other bicyclists. Turning. 
Turning safely and smoothly is one of the most important driving skills you need to learn. Turning right. To make a right turn, drive close to the right edge of the road. You can drive in a bike lane, but wait to enter until you are 200 feet from the turn. Check for bicyclists in your blind spot. Watch for pedestrians, bicyclists, or motorcyclists between your vehicle and the curb. Begin signaling about 100 feet before the turn. Look over your right shoulder. Reduce your speed. Stop behind the limit line. If there is no limit line, stop before you enter the crosswalk. If there is no crosswalk, stop before you enter the intersection. Look both ways and turn when it's safe. Do not turn wide into another lane. Complete your turn in the right lane. Keep reading for more information about turning right in specific situations. Right turn against a red light. You may turn right at the red light unless there is a no turn on a red sign Follow the same steps as a normal right turn. Right turn against the red arrow. You may not turn right. If you are stopped at the red arrow light, wait until the light changes to green before making your turn. Right turn at a public transit bus lane. It is illegal to drive, stop, park, or leave a vehicle in an area designed for public transit buses. Signs will be posted to indicate the lanes are for bus only use. However, you may cross a bus lane to make a right turn. Right turn onto a road with a dedicated lane. A dedicated right turn lane does not merge into another lane and allows you to make a free right turn without stopping first. You may make your turn even if there is a red light for vehicles going straight through the intersection if there is a traffic light or sign on the right curb of the right turn lane. You must obey that light or sign. Always yell to pedestrians in a crosswalk when turning. If free right turns are not allowed, there will be a sign saying so. Turning left. To make a left turn, drive close to the center divider or into the left turn lanes. Start signaling 100 feet before the turn. Look over your left shoulder and reduce your speed. Stop behind the limit line. If there is no limit line, stop before you enter the crosswalk. If there is no crosswalk, stop before you enter the intersection. Look left, right, then left again. Make the turn when safe. When you turn left, do not turn the steering wheel too soon and enter the lane of oncoming vehicles. This is known as cutting the corner. Keep your wheels pointed straight ahead until it's safe to start your turn. If your wheels are pointed to the left and the vehicle hits you from behind, you could be pushed into oncoming traffic. Left turn against a red light. You may only turn left against a red light when you are turning from one-way street onto one-way street. Check to make sure there is no sign prohibiting the turn. Yield to other vehicles, pedestrians or bicyclists who have a green light look both ways and turn when it's safe. You turn A U-turn is when you turn your vehicle around to go back in the direction you came. To make a U-turn, signal and use the far left lane or center left turn lane. You may make a legal U-turn across a double yellow line. In the residential district, if no vehicles are approaching you within 200 feet, Whenever traffic sign, light, or traffic light protects you from approaching vehicles. At an intersection on a green traffic light or green arrow, unless no U-turn sign is posted. On a divided highway, only if an opening is provided in the center divider. 
Never make a U-turn. Wear a no U-turn sign is posted. At or on a railroad crossing. On a divided highway, by crossing a dividing section, curb, strip of land, or two sets of double yellow lines. When you cannot see clearly for 200 feet in each direction, because of a curl, hill, rain, fog, or other reason. When other vehicles may hit you on a one-way street, in front of a fire station, never use a fire station driveway to turn around. In business districts, including areas with churches, apartments, and public buildings, except schools, in these areas, turn only at an intersection unless a sign forbids it, or rare openings are provided for turns. Examples of turns Get familiar with a different kinds of turns. The numbers on the cars in the image refer to the number of the example. So if you see this, there is a yellow car. Number one, the blue car, number two, there's other red car in the left. Number one, left turn from a two-way street. Start the turn in the left lane closest to the middle of the street. Use the center left turn lane if one is available and the turn in the left lane closest to the middle of the street going in your vehicle's direction of travel. In some situations, there may be signs or arrows to indicate that you can turn left from either lane. Number two, right turn. Begin and end the turn in the lane closest to the right edge of the road. Do not swing wide into another lane of traffic. Watch for pedestrians, motorcycles, and bicyclists between your vehicle and the curb. Sometimes, signs or pavement markings will let you turn right from another lane. This is shown by the asterisk in the image it's right here number three left turn from a two-way street onto one-way street start the turn from the lane closest to the middle of the street if there are three or more lanes in your direction of travel, you may end your turn in any lane that is safely open, as shown by the arrows. It's right here. Number four. Left turn from a one-way street onto two-way street. Start the turn from the far left lane. And the turn in the left lane closest to the middle of the street, going in your vehicle's direction of travel. Number five. Left turn from a one-way street onto one-way street. Start a turn from the far left lane. Watch for pedestrians, motorcycles, and the bicycles between your vehicle and the curb. Bicyclists can legally use the left turn lane for their left turns. If there are three or more lanes in your direction of travel, you may end your turn in any lane that is safely open, as shown by the arrows. Number 6. Right turn from a one-way street onto one-way street. Start a turn in the far right lane. If safe, you may end a turn in any lane. 
Sometimes signs or pavement markings will let you turn right from another lane. Number seven, turn at a T intersection from a one-way street onto two-way street. Traffic going straight through the intersection has the right of way. You may turn either right or left from the center line. Watch for vehicles, motorcycles, bicyclists, and pedestrians. Merging and exiting. Merging. Highway traffic has the right of way. For more information, see right of way rules. Who goes first in section ten? Laws and rules of the road. When you enter a highway, you will need to enter at or near the speed of traffic. Merge into highway traffic when safe to do so. Do not stop unless absolutely necessary. Merge into space large enough for your vehicle to safely join the lane. Do not try to merge into gap that is too small. Use your mirrors and turn signals. Watch for vehicles around you. Turn your head to quickly look over your shoulder before changing lanes or merging into traffic. Leave a three seconds of space, three seconds rule between you and the vehicle ahead of you. Make sure you can stop safely if you need to. For more information, see tailgating in section eleven, safe driving. If you need to cross several lanes, cross them one at a time. Check your blind spots for vehicles each time. Exiting. To exit a highway safely, know your exit and be aware of when it's approaching. If you plan to change lanes, signal and look over your shoulder to check your blind spot. Change lanes one at a time until you are in the proper lane to exit. When exiting, signal your intention for about five seconds. Make sure you are at a safe speed to exit. Crossing or entering traffic. When crossing or entering traffic from a full stop, signal. And leave a large enough space to get up to the speed of other vehicles. It is important to know how much space you need for merging, crossing, entering, and exiting traffic. You need a space that is about half a block on city streets, a full block on the highway. If you are crossing lanes or turning, make sure there are no vehicles or people blocking the path ahead or to your sides. You do not want to be caught in an intersection with traffic coming at you. Even if you have a green light, do not start going across the intersection if there are vehicles blocking your way. When turning left, do not assume. That an oncoming vehicle with its right turn signal on its turning before it reaches you. The driver may plan to turn just beyond you, or the signal may be on unintentionally. This is particularly true of motorcycles. Their signal lights often do not turn off automatically. Wait to see where the other driver starts to turn before you continue. Passing. You must judge whether you have enough space to pass whenever you approach an oncoming vehicle, a hill or curve, an intersection, a road obstruction, a bicyclist. Before you pass. 
Look ahead for road conditions and traffic that could cause other vehicles to move into your lane. Only pass when it's safe. Do not pass if you are approaching a hill or curve and cannot see if other traffic is approaching. Within 100 feet of or an intersection, bridge, tunnel, railroad, crossing, or other hazardous area, at crossroads and driveways. Have to pass. Pass other vehicles on the left. You may pass on the right only when an open highway clearly has two or more lanes going your direction. The driver ahead of you is turning left and you do not have to drive off the road to pass. Never pass on the left if the driver is signaling a left turn. You are on a one-way street. Never drive off the path or main travel part of the road to pass. The edge of the main travel part of the road may have painted white line. Do not pass on the shoulder. Don't try to pass unless you know you have enough space to return to your lane. When you are going to pass on an open highway, signal that you plan on passing. Look over your shoulder to check your blind spot. Drive into the passing line, lane. Speed up to pass the vehicle. Return to your original lane. Being passed. If a vehicle is passing you or signals that they plan on passing, allow the vehicle to pass. Maintain your lane position. Do not try to go faster to avoid being passed. Parking. Parallel parking. Parallel parking is when you park parallel to the road in line with other parked vehicles. Here are the steps to parallel parking. First, find a space. Look for a space at least three feet longer than your vehicle. When you find a space, turn on your signal to show that you plan on parking. Second, pull up alongside the vehicle in front of the space you are parking in. Leave about two feet between your vehicle and the next vehicle next to you. Stop once your rear bumper is lined with the front of your parking space. Keep your signal on. Third, check your rear view mirror. Look over your shoulder for approaching vehicles. Keep your foot on the brake. Put the vehicle reverse. Fourth, begin backing up. Turn your wheel to back into the space at about a 45 degree angle. Fifth, straighten out. Begin turning the steering wheel away from the curb when your rear wheel is within 18 inch of the curb. You may need to pull forward and backward to straighten out. Your vehicle should not be parallel and within 18 inch of the curb. Sixth, center your vehicle in the parking space. Turn off your vehicle and set the parking brake. Before you exit your vehicle, look carefully for passing of vehicles, bicycles, and motorcycles. Exit when safe. Parking on a hill. When you park on a hill, remember that. Your vehicle could roll if your brakes fail. When you park on a sloping driveway, turn the wheels so the vehicle won't roll into the street if the brakes 
fail. Headed downhill. Turn your front wheels into the curb or tower the side of the road. Set the parking brake. Headed uphill. Turn your front wheels away from the curb and let your vehicle roll back a few inches. The wheel should gently touch the curb. Set the parking brake. Head it either uphill or downhill when there is no curb. Turn the wheel so the vehicle will roll away from the center of the road if the brakes fail. Always set your parking brake and leave the vehicle in gear or in the parking position. If you see the photos over here, downhill is going to be Turn the wheels, tower the curb. Uphill. Turn the wheels away from the curb. No curb. Turn the wheels toward the shoulder of the road. Parking at colored curbs. Painted colored curbs have special parking rules. White. Stop only long enough to pick up or drop off passengers. Green. Park for a limited time. The time limit may be posted on signs or painted on the curb. Yellow. Load and unload passengers and freight. Do not stop longer than the time posted. If you drive a non-commercial vehicle, you are usually required to stay with your vehicle. Red. No stopping, standing, or parking. Buses may stop at the red zone marked for buses. Blue. Parking for a disabled person or someone driving a disabled person. To park here, you must display a placard or license plate for disabled persons or disabled veterans. Misuse of a disabled person parking placard or license plate will result losing special parking privileges. It is punishable by a fine of up to $1,000, imprisonment in country jail for up to six months, or both. Disabled people with a placard or license plate may park in a parking zone with a time limit for any amount of time, regardless of posted time limits. To learn more about disabled parking placards and license plates, visit dmv.ca.gov slash disabled person parking or call one 800 7 Seven seven zero one three three. Illegal parking. Never park or leave your vehicle where a no parking sign is posted on a marked or unmarked crosswalk, on a sidewalk partially blocking a sidewalk, or in the front of a driveway within 30 feet of a sidewalk ramp for disabled persons, in the front of or on a curb that provides wheelchair access to a sidewalk, in a disabled person parking space, unless displaying a disabled person placard or license plates, in the cross-hatched area next to designed disabled parking space, in a space designated for parking or filling zero emission of vehicles, unless you are driving a zero emission vehicle. In a tunnel or in a bridge, except where permitted by signs, within 15 feet of a fire hydrant or fire station driveway, between a safety zone and curb, double parked, Parking in the street because all parking spaces by the curb are taken. 
on the wrong side of the street or on the freeway, except in an emergency, when a law enforcement officer or device requires a stop, where a stop is specifically permitted. If you must stop on a freeway, park completely off the pavement, and stay in your vehicle with the doors locked until help arrives. Leave enough space for other vehicles to safely pass your vehicle. Your vehicle should be visible for at least two hundred feet in each direction. A vehicle that is stopped, parked, or left standing on the freeway for more than four hours may be removed. Electric vehicles. Local authorities can reserve parking spaces on a public street for electric vehicle charging. Green driving. Driving green is maximizing your fuel efficiency to help lower emissions. Here are a few things you can do to drive green. Driving habits: speed up and slow down smoothly. Drive at a steady average speed. Maintenance: keep your vehicle in good shape. Regularly inflate your tires. Get oil changes and check filters. Weight: get rid of extra weight in your vehicle. Clear out the trunk. Remove luggage racks from the roof. You might also consider a zero emission vehicle powered by electricity or hydrogen. This will help lower emissions even more. Plug in electric cars. Charge overnight at home or at public or workplace charging stations. Hydrogen fuel cell electric cars. Refill at Public hydrogen stations. These types of vehicles do not produce tailpipe emissions or need oil chains. They have excellent fuel economy and need minimal maintenance. For more information, visit fueleconomy.gov. Green driving is promoted by the Office of Transportation. And air quality, and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Law enforcement stops. During a law enforcement stop, turn on your right turn signal to acknowledge that you see the officer. Move completely onto the right shoulder, even if in the carpool. H O V lane. Stop in a well lit area when possible. End your cell phone conversation and turn off your radio. Remain inside your vehicle unless directed to get out of by the officer. Roll the windows down after stopping your vehicle and before the officer makes contact with you. Place your hands and all passengers' hands. In clear view before the officer makes contact with you. This may be on the steering wheel, dashboard, or your lap. Your rights during the enforcement stop. If an officer asks your permission to do something, you have a right to say no. However, if you say no and the officer says they are going to it anyway, you. You don't have a right to interfere with their actions. For example, an officer may request to search part or all your vehicle. You have a right to decline that request, but the officer may have the legal authority to search your vehicle anyway under certain circumstances. If you don't want the officer to search your vehicle, you should clearly say that you don't give your permission. But you don't have a right to resist or obstruct the officer if they search your vehicle anyway. The driver of a stopped vehicle must produce a driver's license, proof of insurance, and a vehicle registration when stopped by law enforcement. If a driver does not produce these documents, officers may conduct a limited search for them. An officer may also request the names or identification of passengers. 
Passengers can decline that request, but under some circumstances, the passengers may be required to identify themselves anyway. If passengers do not want to produce their identification, they should clearly say so. Passengers shouldn't they interfere with the officer's duties in conducting the traffic stop. And if an officer demands identif- identification, passengers should not interfere with the officer's actions. During a traffic stop, an officer can legally require the driver and all passengers to exit or stay inside the vehicle. If you are told to exit the vehicle or stay inside, you must do so. In California, Only federal law enforcement officers can ask you about your immigration status. California law prohibits state and local officers from asking drivers or passengers about their immigration status. If a California law enforcement officer asks you about your immigration status, you can decline to answer. In general, The First Amendment protects the right of drivers and passengers to record interactions with law enforcement in public spaces. If you are recording, you should immediately make that clear. You don't have a right to interfere with the officer's lawful duties during the enforcement stop, and you shouldn't reach into concealed areas to retrieve your recording device without the officer's permission. If your recording is not interfering with the officer's ability to lawfully do their job, an officer cannot confiscate your recording device, delete the recording, or destroy the device just because you are using it to record. In general, you also have the right to deny a request to unlock a cellular phone or provide a password to it. Tough, under some circumstances, Such as if you are on a parole, you may have to give permission in response to such requests. Finally, no government employee can retaliate against you just because you recorded something in public. Even if you believe your rights were violated, you should not engage in physical resistance or violence against the officer. If an officer does something that you believe violates your rights, you can voice your objection, but you should not physically resist. Everyone has the right to be safe during a traffic stop. Your safety and the other officer's safety could be jeopardized if the situation escalates with physical resistance or violence. All members of the public have a right to file a complaint against any law enforcement agency, and it is against the law for any government employee to retaliate against you for doing so. You can file a complaint with the law enforcement agency that employs the officer. You have a right to be free from discrimination based on your actual or perceived race, sex, color, ethnicity, national origin, age, religion, gender identity, or expression, sexual orientation, mental or physical disability, medical condition, or citizenship status. You also have other rights guaranteed by the United States and California Constitution, as well as California and federal laws. When you file a complaint, the agency that employs the officer must investigate the complaint. Links to contact information for California law enforcement agencies can be found at post.ca.gov slash LE agencies. All right, guys, we have just recovered until section... Nine, as we discussed, we are going to take regular driver classy license classy test number one. Sample classy written test number one. You may 
drive off the paved roadway to pass another vehicle. If the shoulder is wide enough to accommodate your vehicle, if the vehicle ahead of you is turning left, under no circumstances, we're going to choose under no circumstances, we may drive off the paved roadway to pass another vehicle. Question number two. You are approaching a railroad crossing with no warning devices and are unable to see 400 feet down the tracks in one direction. The speed limit is 15 mph, 20 mph, 25 mph. We are going to choose 15 mph. Question number three. When parking your vehicle parallel to the curb on a level street, your front wheels must be turned toward the street. Your wheels must be within 18 inches of the curb. One of your rear wheels must touch the curb. When parking your vehicle parallel to the curb on a level street, your wheels must be within 18 inches of the curb. That's what we're going to choose. Question number four. When you are emerging onto the freeway, you should be driving at or near the same speed as the traffic on the freeway. 5 to 10 mph slower than traffic on the freeway. The posse speed limit for traffic on the freeway. We are going to choose the first option as at or near the same speed as the traffic on the freeway as we read on the handbook. Question number five. When driving in the fog, you should use your fog lights only. High beams, low beams. We're going to choose low beams. When we are driving in the fog, we should use low beams. Question number six. A white painted curb means loading zone for freight or passengers only. Loading zone for passengers or mail only. Loading zone for freight only. We're going to choose loading zone for passengers or mainly mail only. Question number seven. A school bus ahead of you in your lane is stopped with red lights flashing. You should stop, then proceed with when you think all of the children have exited the bus. Slow to 25 mph and pass cautiously. Stop as long as the red lights are flashing. We are going to choose the last option as stop as long as red lights are flashing. Question number eight. California's basic speed law says you should never drive faster than posted speed limits. You should never drive faster than is safe for current conditions. The maximum speed limit in California is 70 mph on certain freeways. We are going to choose the middle is you should never drive faster than is safe for current conditions. Question number nine. You just sold your vehicle. You must notify DMV within five days or 10 days or 15 days. The correct answer, I would say the first one as five days. Last question number 10. To avoid last minute moves, you should be looking down the road to where your vehicle will be in about five to 10 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds, 15 to 20 seconds. We are going to choose the middle one, 10 to 15 seconds. Okay, guys, let's do our submission. Thanks for taking our sample test. You got 10 correct out of 10. Yay! See your full results below. The correct answer is in bolded text. We are going to check now. Question number one. You may drive off, off the paved roadway to pass another vehicle under no circumstances. Question number two. 
you are approaching a railroad crossing with no warning devices and are unable to see 400 feet down the tracks in one direction. The speed limit is 15 mph. Question number three. When parking your vehicle parallel to the curb on a level street, your wheels must be within 18 inches of the curb. When you are merging onto the freeway, you should be driving at or near the same speed as the traffic on the freeway. Question number five. When driving in a fog, you should use your low beams. Question number six. A white painted curb means loading zone for passengers or mail only. Question number seven. A school bus ahead of you in your lane is stopped with red lights flashing. You should stop as long as the red lights are flashing. Question number eight. California's basic speed law says you should never drive faster than is safe for current conditions. Question number nine. You just sold your dev- vehicle, you must notify the DMV within five days. Last question number 10. To avoid last minute moves, you should be looking down the road to where your vehicle will be in about 10 to 15 seconds. All right, congratulations to us. Now we are going back to sample driver license knowledge test. And we are going to take the second sample class C written test two. Sample class C written test two. Question number one. You are about to make a left turn. You must signal continuously during the last 50 feet before the turn, 75 feet before the turn. 100 feet before the turn. The correct answer we would say 100 feet before the turn. Question number two. Which of the following statements about blind spots is true? They are eliminated if you have one outside mirror on each side of the vehicle. Large trucks have bigger blind spots than most passenger vehicles. Blind spots can be checked by looking in your rear view mirrors. Which of the following statements about blind spots is true? We are going to choose the second option as large trucks have bigger blind spots than most passenger vehicles. Question number three. You have been involved in a minor traffic collision with a parked vehicle and you can't find the owner, you must leave a note on the vehicle, report the accident without delay to the city, police, or in unincorporated areas to the CHP, or both of the above. The correct answer is both of the above. Question number four. Unless otherwise posted the speed limit in a residential area is 20 mph, 25 mph, 30 mph. The correct answer we would say the 25 mph. Question number five. You may legally block an intersection when you enter the intersection on the green light during rush hour traffic, under no circumstances? The correct answer is under no circumstances. Question number six. When parking uphill on a two-way street with no curb, your front wheels should be turned to the left toward the street, turned to the right 
away from the street, parallel with the pavement. When parking uphill on a two-way street with no curb, your fr front wheel should be turned to the right, away from the street. Question number seven. With the Class C driver's license, a person may drive a three-axle vehicle if the gross vehicle weight is less than 6,000 pounds. Any three-axle vehicle, regardless of the weight, a vehicle pulling two trailers. The correct answer is a three-axle vehicle if the gross vehicle weight is less than 6,000 pounds. Question number eight. To turn left from a multi-lane multi one-way street onto one-way street, you should start your turn from any lane as long as it's safe. The lane close to the left curb, the lane in the center of the road. The correct answer is the lane closest to the left curb. Question number nine. If you are involved in a traffic collision, you are required to complete and submit a written report to the DMV. Only if you or the other driver is injured. If there is a property damage excess of $1,000 or if there are any injuries. Only if you are at fault. The correct answer is if there is a property damage excess of $1,000 or if there are any injuries. Last question number 10. Roadways are the most slippery during a heavy downpour after it has been raining for a while. The first rain after a dry spell. The correct answer is the first rain after a dry spell. Let's do the submission now. Thanks for taking our sample test. You got 10 correct out of 10. Yay! See your full results below. The correct answer is bolder text. Question number one. You are about to make a left turn. You must signal continuously during the last 100 feet before the turn. Question number two. Which of the following statements about blind spots is true? Large trucks have bigger blind spots than most passenger vehicles. Question number three. You have been involved in a minor traffic collision with a parked vehicle and you can't find the owner. You must leave a note on the vehicle, report the accident without delay to the city police or unincorporated areas to the CHP. So we're going to do the both of the above. Question number four. Unless otherwise posted the speed limit in a residential area is 25 mph. Question number five. You may legally block an intersection under no circumstances. Question number six. When parking uphill on a two-way street with no curb, your front wheels should be turned to the right away from the street. Question number seven. With the Class C driver's license, a person may drive a three-axle vehicle if the gross vehicle weight is less than 6,000 pounds. Question number eight. To turn left from a multi-lane one-way street onto one-way street, you should start your turn from the lane close to the left curb. Question number nine. If you are involved in a traffic collision, you are required to complete and submit a written report to the DMV. If there is a property damage in excess of $1,000, or if there are any injuries. Last question number 10. Roadways are the most slippery, the first rain after a dry spell. All right, everyone. Thank you so much that listening to the California Driver's Handbook 
and studying the test with me. And I will see you guys with the next video of starting the section 10. You have a beautiful day and subscribe, like, and share. Alrighty, bye bye.